are back at the Department of Ag Crops Garden, and joining me again is Micah Anderson, the Market Development Coordinator, and it's time to start harvesting this garden. We've got some peanuts here in front of us. It looks like they've done quite well. Yeah, uh, the peanut, it's the end of the season, almost time for a frost, and it's, it's time for, uh, to, to dig the peanuts up, and so uh, we're going to be uh, harvesting these, and, and there's a little knack to it. As you can see, uh, Dr. Roach is uh, digging them and kind of gets around them and pulls them out there. So this one's kind of unique uh, as far as the plant goes because it is a fruit, but it develops underneath uh, the, the soil. soil. So you've got, is this, where, this is where the peanuts Pe develop. Right, this is the pigs and, uh, and they, when they pollinate, and then the pigs go into the ground. It takes this about 10 days to go into the ground. You can see this one is just starting to barely develop. That one's a little bit more, and then this one further along, and then these are fully developed here. But, uh, but the longer you leave them in the ground, the more peanuts they make. Okay. So you can, that's why you don't dig them until it's close to frost. Okay, so they don't necessarily all develop at the same time. No. All but right. you could you could get peanuts earlier on, but you're gonna get more if you leave them in the ground longer. It's so unique, and now normally the flower is a yellow flower above the ground, and this is in uh, the legume family. Mm -hmm. So this is going to help with nitrogen in your soil and right, everything. Right, exactly. But now that we have uh, some peanuts harvested, what do we need to do with this plant? Then, well, we, what you usually do is just turn it upside down. We'll lay it out here on the grass and let them cure for about uh, a couple of weeks. And then once they cure, then you take them and take them off the plant and roast them and do whatever you want. Okay. Or some people in the further south, they'll take them just like they are right now and boil them and eat boiled peanuts. It's real popular in Georgia and Mississippi and places like that. So obviously they are fairly soft right now because they've been in the moist soil. So yeah. we want to dry them out. And then this is... Add a little salt to them. <laughs> yeah. Supposedly this is not ideal soil for uh, peanuts. Mm -hmm. You want to grow them in more of a sandy soil. But because we have the drip irrigation, you can see the lines there, and we were able to water them, we were able to grow some pretty, a pretty good uh, crop of peanuts and able to dig them. Otherwise, in this hard soil, they, they wouldn't do real well. Very nice. Micah, here at the Commodity Display Garden in front of the Department of Ag, you've got some cotton that you're growing. Can you tell us about the different varieties of cotton? Well, we have uh, some brown cotton that came from, um, the seed came from Mississippi. Um, and the story on the brown cotton was it's an heirloom, which you, you know you can replant the seeds. But it's uh, cotton that uh, when the slaves were released from the plantations, uh, first released, they wasn't allowed to grow white cotton because the white cotton was worth more money. And so they, they grew brown cotton for the most part. So this is some of the seeds, and a lot of these seeds have gotten lost, but uh, a seed company that came up with it, and so I planted a little bit of it. And it's just kind of a history thing here. Hmm. And then we have the red foliated cotton, and it's not as pretty as it was earlier in the in the summer. Mm -hmm. But the leaves are, are red. It's not as big a stalk as the other because it's more. This is more of a, a just for looks. Uh, it's a cotton ornamental. That, ornamental, yeah, ornamental cotton. It can be planted in a pot and. Uh, so a lot of people plant this just for like a flower in a pot, and uh, it grows very well in a pot. And then you also just have your typical uh, green cotton. That grows uh, white, yeah. This is uh, just the regular cotton that we grow in Oklahoma, the regular white cotton. It's very, a hybrid. Very nice. So this garden is always full of different things. We've got the, the vegetables growing at the other end of this, but these are the sweet potatoes that we planted earlier this summer. They've grown quite a bit. Yeah, we, we put a fence around them to keep the vines from going coming out into the street and you know, over into our next uh, planting of uh, peppers or whatever. And it gives us a good idea of what people can do in their backyard. I actually got it from another guy that plant sweet potatoes in his backyard and it uses a round cage. But we put a rectangular fence around. The only thing I didn't make my fence strong enough. <laughs> and it broke, it's actually breaking down the fence in the zip ties that we put. So I should have put more peat tree posts in the and the more zip ties. But anyway, we're to the harvest point now. Okay, so, so instead of letting them kind of sprawl across, you've, you've wrangled them a little bit here right. and put the fence on. Let, so what do we need to do in order to harvest them? Well, at this point now, it's a little bit more 
a process, rather than just going in and digging, we got to start pruning away all the vines okay. to get to the fence. So what we do is just start grabbing some of them and just start getting down clip them. And now you can kind of see see the fence a little bit. So Michael, what is it about now that we've decided to harvest? We're in late October. Is it because it might be freezing soon? Yeah. Uh, usually this week is the first week of a frost. Mm -hmm. Although uh, they're not showing a frost yet, but this is usually the time that you would harvest sweet potatoes. Uh, you can actually harvest them a little earlier because some varieties only take 90 days, but some varieties take 120. So, because they are a tropical plant. Yeah, tropical. So they like the heat. Uh huh. And uh, the, but you know they also are water. They love water. So uh, we try to water them really well. And why did you decide to fence them in rather than letting them run across the ground? Were, are you able? It's it's a space saver, and I think it's it'd be it's a great idea for homeowners to in backyards uh, because the vines can grow up the fence and come back down. And then we actually pruned a lot of these vines away to be able to get to our peppers. Okay. But it keeps them off the peppers and tomatoes and then our street where we could drive. So, and they were able to grow sweet potatoes. The first year we had this garden, we didn't grow sweet potatoes because the, the vines was all over the place. But with this fence, we've been growing them the last three years like this. And you notice that the, it hasn't affected the production at all? Or? No, actually, I think uh, we've gotten really big, nice uh, crops. Uh, so I think it actually helps the production. Okay. So the climbing of the vines and, and it makes maybe nicer roots. I'm not sure. But uh, that's the way I feel about it anyway. <laughs> well, now that we've gotten to the fence and we can see the fence, we're going to open it up to right. uh, get into the actual plants? Yeah, I got my, uh, let's see. So just pull it over. So okay, next, so this is uh, like some wide chicken wire. Next year you might use hog paneling. Yeah, I may use cattle, cattle, panels. cattle panels or something next year just to, because the vines got so heavy. So there's the plastic culture under there. Yeah, and right there, there's like a plant right here. Okay. And that would, I'm, it's going to be one of the red uh, sweet potatoes because of the red vines. So now when you plant sweet potatoes in plastic culture, you only get one season of that plastic culture, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it's, uh, you're going to have to uh, rip the plastic out. And the varieties you said again? Uh, Old Henry, uh, Beauregard, and All Purple. So, Micah, now that we have found the base of those plants, what's the next step? Well, it's pulling the plastic up, and uh, but also I'd leave a, a, a part of the root here so you can see the top of the plant uh -huh. where the potato is going to be. Okay. And when I pull the plastic over, off and over top of that, then I'll dig around it. But I'll stay back from it a little ways, you know, a certain distance, trying to keep uh, from uh, breaking the potatoes. And in, sometimes you still break them, but if you just dig right on top of the roots, you're going to bust them all up. So we're just going to go ahead and tear this plastic and pull it up over. Yeah, and you can actually oh, see some of, the, some of the potatoes. Here, let me pull this plastic. Let me see off. if I can get this loose over here. You see this one over here? Wow, look at that. Uh, well, I think that's a, a Beauregard sweet potato that it's the orange sweet potato. Okay. And this this is going to be the red in the middle. And I think that one over there is going to be the white old Henry called old Henry. This one here. Okay. So now time to start digging. There you go. Very nice. Uh, you can see the flesh is red. Yeah, purple. And, uh... 
So we yeah. will break these off, right? Right, break them off. And that's your individual sweet potatoes. Right there. Now the other thing when you're harvesting, we want to take these out of the sun as soon as possible because I've uh, read that in 30 minutes, uh, they can actually get sun scald on their skin, which can damage the, the flavor and the texture of it as well. Okay. And it's best to let these cure, um, especially if you're gonna store them for a while. Yeah, you, uh, you, uh, you suppose, supposedly you put them with high, high, kind of high humidity at 80 degrees for three days. Right. Cure them, it makes, they usually taste sweeter after they cure, and then they will hold. You can, you can actually store them for three or three months or, or, or even longer sometimes. And that curing process just helps callus over any open wounds that are yeah. on there so if the you, bacteria doesn't get in there. If you break them, then they, they yeah, they, they cure and they seal off and just helps with the storing. And, and um, most people say they taste much better once they're cured. All right, well, thank you for sharing this, Micah, and let's get to digging. All right. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.